Well, they say you should surround yourself with a good CPA, attorney, and someone in the insurance realm. And we're joined by someone who can be part of your benefits team, Tom Mastney. Tom, how are you, sir? I'm good, Neil. Fantastic. How are you? I'm excellent. Uh, You know a thing or two about being on a team, I see. Uh, Is this the familiar surroundings for you? That is. That's my former stomping grounds. Yeah. Yeah. Spent uh, parts of three seasons with the Cleveland Indians. Eight years, nine years professionally playing baseball, so been around, but yeah, that brings back a lot of memories. Uh, you know, what did you learn about um, being on a close knit team of a couple of dozen guys that you think you kind of can take into the business world? Yeah, you know, I had a, a coach in college that was pretty instrumental in in shaping, I guess, my career and mentality. And he had a saying: "It was many hands make light work." Okay. So from a team perspective, I've always just appreciated that the more people that are rowing in the same direction or adding to your team makes your work easier and your life easier. Um, and, you know, you can correlate sports to business, I mean, in so many ways. Um, how did you get started in sports and, you know, just kind of walk us through the years a little bit? Oh, how much time you got? Yeah. <laughs> Back <laughs> uh, when I was yeah. uh, in T-ball. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ever since I can remember, I was I had some kind of either ball in my hand or I was playing some kind of sport. So I uh, grew up just outside of Indianapolis. Um, I've got two sisters. And my, my parents played sports growing up, so it was just a big part of our family. We all um, partook in either it was softball, baseball, soccer, basketball. Um, I just felt like I was always playing some kind of sport. When I got to, to high school, I had to make a decision between baseball and soccer. And with my size, uh, baseball was where, where I, f- I fell into it. But uh, grew up in Indianapolis, ended up going to Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina. Which is a couple of hours from us. That's right. That's what brought us down here. Really? Yep. So we just kind of fell in love with the area and, uh, you know, everything – We've got, we'll we'll explain more about it, but uh, everything's circled back to this part of the country and we've just set up roots here. That's fantastic. And, and you mentioned we, so you you have a family, uh, how many, uh, one wife. I do have one wife, one wife. I think I'm still married. (laughs) We're not uh, in Utah (laughs) for anyone checking at home. We're here in the CSRA. We are, we are extremely busy. Um, I've my wife and I, Joanna, um, Joanna and I have three kids. Uh, We have a 13 year old, a 10 year old. And uh, almost a five-year-old. She'll be five April 1st. And uh, and your wife's a local attorney, part of the community as well, which is fantastic. And um, somewhere along the line, while you were in the baseball world, concurrently you were planning for life after retirement. When did that decision happen? You know, it, I always looked at business as, and sports um, – as a business. Uh, When I graduated from Furman in 2003, I got drafted by the Blue Jays. And in 2005, I asked my mother-in-law at the time if I could marry my, her daughter. Her (laughs) first question to me was, how are you going to support my daughter? (laughs) Which is a fair question. I was making $800 a month at the time playing minor league baseball, not a care in the world. Oh, that much? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I felt like I was rich. And all the hot dogs you could eat. Yes. Peanut peanut butter and jelly, (laughs) you know, but, um, so, you know, I, I looked at this as a five-year business plan uh, in a realization that I had a college degree as something to fall back on. But if I didn't make it within five years to where I wanted to be, then I was going to start my life. Because what I didn't want to be is at 35, 40-year-old, um, not being able to support my family and still fighting that dream and then having to start all over when you get out. So um, I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to make it nine years in professional baseball, but I got to a point where – I just didn't enjoy the travel anymore, didn't enjoy being away from my family, and my priorities at that point had shifted, Um, so I called it quits and retired um, at 28 and started, started searching for the career. And we're continuing to speak with Tom Masney, who is the owner of uh, the Pennant Group, and they take care of um, health insurance needs for your company, big or small, online at thepennantgroup.com. And I know that you played overseas at at some point, and communication-wise, was there a gap, and did that play anything into you deciding to go down this path? It did. It did. So, you know, after, after three years in Cleveland, um, 
I decided that I wanted to take control of my destiny, and I asked to be released uh, from the Cleveland Indians and become a free agent. At that point, I took my, my talents to Japan, and I spent basically a year in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, it taught me a lot about myself, taught me a lot about my personality, my strengths, my weaknesses, um, and also what a priority in my life was. You know, At that point, my wife and four-month-old daughter were living in Fort Worth, Texas. Right. Couldn't make the trip over to Japan for me, so I basically spent nine months away from them. Uh, so I missed basically the first year of my daughter's life, and yeah. and that made me realize what was important. Um, you know, being around my family was definitely more important uh, than my baseball career, and I was at the tail end of it, so I needed to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, but Japan, from a personality um, standpoint, made me realize that – um, it's okay to be uncomfortable in certain situations. Um, the key is to communicate and understand and listen and, and take in what they're saying because uh, the Japanese people are, are beautiful people. They're very transparent. They're very honest. They're very open. Um, but you have to listen and you have to engage with them because of the interpretation of, of the languages. You know, you may say a, a sentence for 10 minutes and then your interpreter turns around and says five words, right? So it's not necessarily the verbal cues, but it's taking a look at um, what what the the reaction is of that person that you're communicating with. But it made me le- learn and realize that, you know, it's okay to try things that are new and different and be out on your own, um, you know. But uh, it was just a great overall experience. Uh, to me, I look back on it and I take – I'm looking back in a rearview mirror – and I took everything for granted at the time. You know, I was playing baseball. I was a big shot, so I thought. And, um, you know, I, I didn't really have a care in the world. But looking back on it, I was like, this was probably the best experience of my life. Um, taught me a lot about myself and what's really important in life. Before we scoot for this first segment, what was the best highlight you had here at Progressive Field or playing for the Indians? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there's a bunch that come to mind, Neil. Um, you know, obviously just stepping foot onto the field for the first time, it was a, a childhood dream of mine. I can remember that I think I was eight years old and somebody said, what do you want to do in your life? And I said, I want to play major league baseball. And every time somebody asked, that's, that was my answer. Um, you know, it's, people started making jokes about it and I said, you know what, I'm going to do this. But a lot of hard work, a lot of determination. I was lucky enough to get there. But I would say if I had to pinpoint one highlight, um, other than not tripping, running in from the bullpen <laughs> on, my, on my debut, um, it would be winning game two of the ALCS um, in 2007. Uh, we played the Boston Red Sox. We were up three games to one in that series. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't win. They came back and then won the World Series. But I, I was lucky enough to win game two of the ALCS. Wow. So I can put that on my mantelpiece and, and say that I did it. Not that many people <laughs> can say that for sure. And you might consider joining uh, Tom's team or allowing him to join your team. It's the pennantgroup.com, and you can learn all sorts of various services that he offers and some more about his background. He's a humble guy, but very trustworthy and someone that could certainly help you in your endeavors uh, moving forward. Now, this is the first time. You've been in the podcast studio. What do you think? You know, it's a, it's a little intimidating. You Is know? it really? I've been in front of, you know, 60,000 60, people before. <laughs> but out there, it's just noise. Yeah. You know, you're never really the, 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 even though you are the spotlight, I mean, I was a pitcher, so all eyes were on me. I didn't have to talk. Um, and, uh, you know, I wasn't up close and personal. There right? you go. But uh, this is new. And, and I think I enjoy it. We'll see. Well, good. <laughs> Absolutely. And we did want to give a little shout out to, to David and Chris, uh, the name of the podcast studio, the company, uh, Get On Up Productions. And there's some information up on the screen for you now. If you'd like some information, just please get in touch with them. And uh, you, too, can go under the bright lights and share some information about your company or your organization. Well, we're continuing our conversation with former Major League Baseball player Tom Masney, who has made the Augusta area his home. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm good, Neil. How about yourself? Excellent. And uh, to prove it, you are whereabouts in in Augusta is your office? So I am uh, 
right in Augusta by Doctors Hospital. So I'm okay. off, off of Augusta West Parkway. Yeah. Um, so right in the heart of things. We're not downtown, um, but my wife and three kids, we all live in the Grovetown Evans area. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're centrally located to be able to access Columbia County and the businesses there and then our clients that are downtown as well. Um, yeah, so we're, we're, we're in the middle of, of the doctor's hospital area, but easily accessible. I'm just kind of uh, wondering, you started um, after retiring, uh, pitching here at Progressive Field and re- retiring at the age of 28. You spent the last 10 years learning about health benefits for specifically for companies. And there's so many different services that we'll go through in, an, in another segment. But I mean, we're in COVID and, and there's just the economy is different. How different is the the benefit world than it was maybe when you started 10 years ago? You know, it's, it's come a long way. Um, I was, I guess, fortunate and unfortunate enough to, to start after the ACA, Affordable Care Act, was enacted in 2010 is when it was voted in, 2013 is when it went into law. Um, I started in this business in 2014, so all I know is the post-ACA era. Um, prior to the ACA era, uh, insurance was you know, underwritten medically, so your conditions really played a role mm-hmm. in, in your rates. Um, Post-ACA era, uh, rates were determined by age and zip code. Um, over the last, I'd say, eight years, it's really transitioned, and insurance companies have looked at different ways of how they can fund it, um, how they can come up with creative solutions, because not not everybody needs that one-size-fits-all approach. So I'd say really over the last eight years, it's tra- transitioned, and then over the last year and a half, two years of COVID, it's really started to to bring upon the digital age. You know, telemedicine is now a huge part of healthcare. Um, being able to access the right doctors when you can, when you need to access the right doctors, and then being able to look up providers and find the right providers in your area has become very easily accessible. Sure. When you sit with a company or someone that's a business leader within a company, what's sort of in your toolkit? What are some different options that you might present just from a general standpoint? You know, to me, it's, it's getting to know what they, what they want and what they're trying to accomplish with their program. So, you know, every, you know, every now and then you sit down and they just want health insurance just to offer health insurance. But at the end of the day, it's trying to accomplish a plan for that company. It's trying to determine what the right plan is for not only the owner, but also for their employees, because not every employee is the same. You know, so does it make sense to offer one plan, two plans, three plans? Uh, with technology nowadays, you can have a plethora of options, and it makes the selection process very easy. Um, you know, but through our process, it's really getting to understand what they're trying to accomplish and put a five-year plan in place. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I like I like to look at it as we're gonna we're gonna crawl, we're gonna walk, we're gonna run, we're gonna fly. Mm-hmm. Right. Your your big picture is where we want to be in five years. Uh, but where are we today is what's important, um, you know, and how we get there is different, but we can implement technology. We can do different funding mechanisms, whether that's self-funded, whether that's fully insured, whether that's level funded. Um, there's a multitude of different products that we can bring to the table. What's the most requested type of service that is just a must have when someone sits down with you? You know, when somebody sits down with you, they, 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 they really just want education. Mm-hmm. You know, they want good health care at a good price. Well, good health care to everybody means different things, right? So that could be a low copay. That could be a low deductible. Mm-hmm. Um, but most importantly, what people are wanting is low premiums. You know, what does it cost on a monthly basis for you, the consumer, and you, the employer, uh, to have that health care? They're wanting cheap, affordable coverage. Um, you know, and, and sometimes that's tough. It just depends on what's going on within the group and um, what their passes look like and what they're trying to get to. So, um, but I would say the first and foremost thing that they're looking for is good, affordable coverage. Okay, we're continuing to speak with Tom Masney, and Tom's website is thepennantgroup.com. And Tom has uh, a lot of specifics about, as he mentioned, different types of benefits and services and different types and ways to pay for it. Um, 
are employees demanding, if you will, or encouraging employers to kick in a little bit more money since there's been such a shortage of good workers these days? It's a good question. <laughs> uh, it depends on who you talk to, okay. right? You know, obviously the employees, I think, don't necessarily understand what the true cost of healthcare is. You know, unfortunately, I, I think employees a lot of day, a lot of times these days are more important with take home pay, which is which is important. But they want another dollar, or two dollars, or three dollars an hour, and they're not necessarily concerned with their healthcare premium until they see it come out of their paycheck. So they are desiring lower cost healthcare, um, but what they don't know is what's going on behind the scenes, why their premiums are so high, and how we can actually lower those you know so ultimately i think what's missing in our industry and what we're trying to fix at the pennant group is the transparency aspect you know transparency not only from a brokerage standpoint consultant of of how we make our money how we get paid and and how we earn that but also from an insurance carrier perspective how they get paid and what um, is truly in their premium and then we want to show that and educate the employees um Pull back the proverbial curtain for okay. the Wizard of Oz, right? Yeah. You know, it's a big, scary wizard. And then when you pull back that curtain, it's just a little guy pulling a bunch of levers. Yeah. So our goal at the Pennant Group is to show and expose those levers and explain that to not only employees, if they want to understand it, but really to the employer um, so they better understand what's driving their costs. Well, a lot of baseball players and teams will bet on themselves, right? And yep. they think they have the ability. What about companies? Do they ever have occasion to say, you know, I just want to ensure my people, I want to absorb the risk. Is there such a thing? And how does that go? There is, there is. And, it, you know, we'll look at Augusta's in the insurance world. Augusta is a small market. Mm -hmm. um, most of the employers in Augusta are under 200 employees. I'd say they're probably under hundred employees or even 50 employees. This mm -hmm. is a small market mm -hmm. um, business size wise. Um, Self-funded is what you're referring yes. to, where we're taking on the risk and we're paying those claims for our employees up to a certain dollar amount. Um, there's Without getting really, really technical, um, there's safety nets that you put in, in, in place to really mitigate your risk when it comes to those high dollar claims. But self-funded has started to trickle down. Um, I would say prior to five years ago, three years ago, you wouldn't see self-funded in a group that was under 300 employees. Mm -hmm. So 300 or more employees, 60 to 70% of the time were self-funded. Nowadays, down to 50 employees is where our sweet spot is on the self-funded side. Wow. Um, and we, we have safety nets that we put in place, you know, whether that's a, a captive, whether that's a consortium, um, but it's, it's grouping yourself with like-minded employers to help offset some of that risk. Okay. Yeah. So... There's a, a bigger pot, there if is. you will, of yeah. money and more shared risk. More shared risk. It's um, not necessarily an outlay of cost to you, but the risk you're taking on is being offset by other groups in your in your captive or consortium. So you're buying. It's basically a buying power, right? It's like um, let's say Costco or Sam's Club. You're buying the same same materials but it's at a cheaper cost because they buy it at a cheaper cost. Sure. So the safety nets that we can get and put in, in place with those uh, self-funded groups are at a cheaper cost because they're being purchased on a larger scale. Well, a couple of ways for you to get started. Um, you could even go to our website where Tom is one of our thought leaders. That's AugustaBusinessDaily.com. You can read and see some podcasts and then also go – to the pennantgroup.com and what does a consultation look like once they sort of um, sort of surf around a bit? Yeah, you know, a consultation for us, it's a free consultation. You know, at the end of the day, we would love to have you as a client. Uh, we understand that there's, there's existing relationships. Um, you know, I look at insurance as we all shop at the same Walmart, you know, for, for the most part, the products that we bring to the table, um, very similar in nature. Uh, you know, so if you like who you're, you're with, I encourage you to, to stay with them or, or come talk and get a second opinion. Really, it doesn't cost you anything to talk with us. Uh, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is show you a, um, what your options look like, different avenues, um, and then just kind of expose the transparency of what's going on 
Um, and then it's ultimately of, you know, who do you trust as your, your advisor? Well said. And we appreciate Tom coming in studio here today to get on up productions here in downtown Augusta and servicing companies really across the United States now from their hub here. And uh, you can go on to their website and learn about how you can get involved if you like. We're continuing our conversation with Tom Masney, who uh, his office window used to be outside of Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio. He got to pitch in the 2007 American League Championship Series, winning game two against them Boston Red Sox parking the car. That's right, man. Uh, it brings brings back painful memories when I see that <laughs> that B or I hear the uh, yeah. I think it's the, the Dropkick Nancys or whatever Dropkick Murphys. I think right their, their famous song. Yeah. Wow. Well, now Tom is joining your team and other teams across the CSRA in terms of uh, benefits and helping you in a difficult time finding really good employees, I would just think that now more than ever, taking care of your employees are, are really critical. Yes, it is. I mean, you know, as you're trying to hire an employee, I think right now the biggest biggest complaint that's out there is we can't find employees. Um, employees are out there, but it's how do you attract and retain those top employees. Um, and benefits, employee benefits play a, a huge role in that, whether it's medical, dental, vision, short-term, long-term disability, or, or even life products. Um, added perks, as you were, per se would call yeah. them, is, is becoming key to hiring those, those top employees. And Tom's website is thepennantgroup.com. I used to remember years ago with my wife going on to a website, I think it was called The Exchange. <laughs> is that right? And you kind of pick through and it was just kind of like you're in group A or group B and it felt like one size fits all. How is your company set up differently? Yeah. You know, so when, when we're talking exchanges, we're really talking about um, individual markets. Um, and there's some, it, it, I would say we've almost come full circle. Mm -hmm. So when um, the ACA was enacted in 2010, uh, put into play in 2013, these exchanges and marketplaces were mm -hmm. really how you're supposed to select your individual health care. And then it was also supposed to roll over to the group. Um, sure. Group segment also, and you could offer 20 different plans if you wanted to choose okay. from. But what, at the end of the day, be, that becomes a little overwhelming um, because what's what's not real, wasn't realized at the time is people don't understand insurance. They don't understand what drives a deductible or what's covered under a deductible or what is a copay. Um, they just see what their monthly premium is, which is a lot of money these days. It can be anywhere up to, I've seen single rates of $1,000 a month, you know, mm. Health insurance for some people is more than their mortgage payment. Right. Um, and ultimately something has to change there. You yeah. know, but our, our goal at the Pennant Group is to start um, driving down those costs or educating on what's driving those costs and then coming up with solutions, um, the right fit solution for that employer and employee at the moment. Um, and there's a lot of neat changes that are coming to our market. You know, insurance can, can almost be like – going to the grocery store like a commodity, like you're buying a product. How has that um, occurred in, in, your, in the area, I guess? And again, how, are, how do you try to approach it a little differently? Yeah, you know, it's uh, unfortunately the insurance carriers are what dictate the marketplace. Um, there's two sides of it, right? So we, we here in the CSRA are actually in a pretty good spot for health insurance premiums, but also competition. We have health, three healthcare systems mm -hmm. that compete for your business. And then we have five health insurance carriers that compete for your business. And we'll call those the Bucas, uh, the Blues, which is Anthem now, mm -hmm. United, Cigna, Aetna, and Humana. Okay. So we have five carriers, um, main carriers that compete for business. So that helps create competition to drive down premiums. And then our healthcare system has competition. Mm -hmm. Um, so from a, from a marketplace standpoint in the United States, we're in a good place today. Um, I'd say in the next two to three years, that's going to change. I mean, we've got some outside entities coming to our market mm -hmm. that their cost of care, uh, they're from a large metropolitan area, their cost of care and what they charge for a procedure is a lot higher. 
Um, ultimately, if you're paying more at the, um, the hospital, then you're going to get charged more from the premiums. So what we're trying to do is pull back that curtain, see what's really driving that employer's costs if we can, and then come up with a five-year plan to, to mitigate some of their risks. How would you explain what sustainable benefit solutions might be? Yeah, so sustainability to me in our industry is really the employers taking back control of health care. Uh, to, to me right now, the insurance companies are dictating what you pay, um, and we don't understand why we're paying it because they have the data, and it's their data, and they're only going to share with you what they want. Mm-hmm. Um, so sustainability to me is having affordable health care that works for an employer and their employees and covers what the employees want. Um, there's a lot of, I'll say, fluff that you're paying for in a traditional health, health plan that you just don't know it. What, what it would, might be an example? Um, bonuses, you know, broker consultant bonuses, uh-huh. um, marketing, advertising that you see on um, – on TV. Sure. Branding. Uh, yeah. Branding. I mean, just an exorbitant amount of money goes out to pay for, pay for their marketing. And that's built into your premium. I see. Um, outside of that, the biggest driver today and in the future is going to be the pharmaceutical piece. Mm. Um, you know, we see, I, I call them TV drugs. So if you see an ad on TV, you know that medication is anywhere from 400 to $25,000 a month. Mm. Um, you may not pay that. You're going to pay your, your copay, and it may be 15 it may be $40. Uh, dollars. But on the back end, the insurance company is paying the, the full mm-hmm. brunt of that, that drug. There's no, uh, there's no cost containment. There's no measures that the government have put into place to hold the pharmaceutical companies um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Accountable. Accountable would probably yeah. be the right word is they just let them dictate what the cost of medication is going to be because mm-hmm. of the patents. Um, you know, I, I think there's a number of different things and we can get into more detail in the future of how mm-hmm. we open that up and create more competition to drive down the prices. But if you're on one of those medications behind the scenes, that's what's driving up your, your premiums on a month-to-month basis. Sure. And you have the ability kind of independently to shop. Is yeah. that right? Which is great. And, and does that include uh, you know, general health care? What about dental? Yeah. So, so at the Pennant Group, you know, the, everybody wants to focus on the medical because sure. that's your largest, largest expense and largest cost from a month-to-month basis. Um, we offer and we're able to shop the market, as you call it, for – Medical, dental, vision, short-term, long-term disability, Mm -hmm. uh, basic life insurance, voluntary life insurance, critical illness, accident. We run the gamut of all Mm -hmm. insurance products Mm -hmm. on the health side. If we're we're getting into the property and casualty side of workers' comp, general liability, we don't touch that. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have strategic partnerships, but we want to be the expert in our one field. Mm -hmm. Um, So anything employee benefits related – on the insurance side is what we focus on. Kind of like looking right into that glove and throwing a 94-mile-an-hour fastball right down the middle. Laser focus. Isn't right. that right? It is. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it's, you know. If you're good at your trait, stick to that trait, right? <laughs> this has been great, and uh, I'm just so glad you're in Augusta. and the Major uh-huh. League, I've, I've not shaken a Major League Baseball <laughs> player's hand before. I uh, appreciate you, and you can go online to thepennantgroup.com, and there's all sorts of really neat, baseball analogies and it's a fun website that makes you know health of your employees interesting and fun and creative and uh, we're so excited to continue the conversation over the next several months well thank you i'm looking forward to explaining health insurance uh, to the csra thanks again tom thanks neil